My name is Sharissa, and I started the Branded You about, let's see, back in April, so about six months ago. And basically, I help people get brilliantly clear about what it is that they have potential in um, and find their light and illuminate their business online. I must have clicked on something online, either on Facebook or on YouTube or something or other. And one thing rolled on to, the ne to, to another and a window popped up and I watched one of Nick's videos. And I thought, oh wow, you know, this is really charismatic and he seems so nice, like no offense, but it's a little weird or a little rare to have like guys seem so personable. <laughs> so I was just like, wow, he seems so personable. And you know, I kept watching him and then of course Facebook targeting or whatever it is, I kept seeing his videos. So I remember him talking about uh, the, the board break and the walking on the glass and how transformational this is going to be. And at that time in my life, I was looking for something that was different in my life, something that was going to sort of push and shove me into a new direction that was different than what I was doing. I just felt like there had to be something more to life and there had to be a different way to, be, to do business. And at that time, I was pretty heavily involved in our family business and we were getting pretty much run down. After 10 years, all of us were literally losing our flame. <laughs> so it was just, I was tired. I wanted something different. I wanted a new direction. I knew that there had to be a better way and I knew I could help more people. I just wasn't sure how. So when he kept talking about how transformational this event was going to be, I was like, okay, yeah, I could totally do that. I don't go to events, so I'm going to make this one count. At the time of, let's see, I think it was the first night that they were doing the board break and the glass walk. And I think I was most definitely scared of the board break more than anything. And for me, I don't even, at the time, I don't even know if I still know what, what, why I was so scared. Um, I can only trace it back to a time in my life where I was told that I had to break a board and I couldn't, not even with my foot, this is when I was younger, and I always thought back to that like I was never able to break through. And so I think I must have carried that on throughout my life. And um, I remember when they had us all sitting down in the room and we had to write on the board like what it was that really blocked us from what we were doing and they put us in groups. and. I wrote judgment. I was constantly worried about judgment from other people, about either not being able to make it or not being able to break through. So um, that was the first part of sort of what happened in that first day. Uh, then it came up to the time where you actually had to get in line <laughs> for the board break. And this is when I started to get nervous. <laughs> And what happened during that time is I remember the guy behind me could tell that I was freaking out <laughs> because I was tearing up, trying not to tear up full burst. And he tried to calm me down. And I just looked at him and I just said, don't talk to me right now. <laughs> so I was like, I was freaking out and I'm standing there and I'm just holding on to my board and some other person tried to calm me down. I was like, just don't talk to me right now. And then I closed my eyes and I, remembered what Nick was saying earlier on in the day. And I remember that he said that, you know, none of us can be successful alone. We all get help and we all need help and support systems as we're going through to help us through those breaks in life. And so I remember thinking that and going, oh my gosh, I am doing like the classic isolating myself from everybody. Um, maybe it's slight sabotage, I have no idea. <laughs> so I sort of took a deep breath and after calming myself down, I took a deep breath and I turned around and I said, I'm so sorry. I don't even remember the guy's name now, but he was so nice. <laughs> like, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, I'm just freaking out a little bit. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? I just needed to put the pressure off me. I needed to put any limelight or anything off me. So that helped a lot. And just having somebody else talk about themselves calmed me down so much and it, it allowed me to stay in line and at least get to the front of the line for my turn. As I'm stepping up for my turn, it all sort of got a little hazy or a little fuzzy. And this doesn't seem like a big thing to some, but this was a big thing to me. For one, the main reason is that all the pressure is on you to perform. And I've always sort of ran, run away from performance for my whole entire life. Um, 
So, and it became even more apparent the next day, but I sort of run away from performance and I'm up there and you only have like so many lines in the room. And so everybody's rooting for you to succeed. And so as soon as you get up and somebody takes your hands and you're supposed to close your eyes and walk on glass, I thought, okay, no problem. That was not a problem. And then I got to the point where I had to do the board break. And it was really hard because the first time I went to go break the board, I remember the instruction that gave us, but for whatever reason, the first time I went to go break it, I didn't think too much of it. Like I just thought, I just need to break the board. I just need to, you know, if I do the same technique he does, then I can break the board. <laughs> and I went to go hit it and it didn't break. And automatically I almost started like, I almost like freaked out inside, but then the fact that everybody around you is like, you can do it, you can do it, don't focus on the board, focus behind the board, look at me, and there's somebody behind the board saying, look at me, look at me, hit me, you know, or, you know, and everybody's screaming at you to like root you on and like get you all pumped up, and I'm just sitting there going, I can barely keep my own thoughts in my head, like I don't even know what I'm thinking at that point. So they're like, do it again, you can do it again, just see through it, and then all of a sudden, I go to break, go to break the board again, and it breaks straight through. And I couldn't even believe it when it happened. It didn't hurt. I thought it was going to hurt. I always thought like because it's a big board, it's gonna hurt. And the next thing I know, I broke down in tears in someone's arms. I don't even remember who that person is. <laughs> I'm remembering now <laughs> what it was like. But I just broke down in that person's arms and I think I might have cried for like an hour and a half, two hours after it. Like the thing on my board was judgment and the fact that I was able to break through it or and have that support meant that it was the first step in my transformation and it meant so much to me and it meant that everything that I had going on in my life, every block that had come up in my life, that I was focusing on the wrong things. I was focusing on the board and I wasn't focusing on what the potential was on the other side. And the fact that I could break through it and see the potential, see the ending, was a huge emotional release for me. And what was really interesting is um, I'm sort of really scared, or I was, <laughs> really scared of being on stage or having too much attention on me. And I think I've pretty much avoided that amount of attention for my entire life. But on the second day of uh, Nick's event, uh, I think he, it was the second day he had the hot seat. And I had signed up for it, for the hot seat, but I just didn't expect anything to come of it because I didn't fill anything out. <laughs> I didn't have a business, I didn't know what I was going to do, and I just figured, like, I, I just, I'll say, that because, you know, oh yeah, I filled out the hot seat, there we go, you know, um, but I didn't expect anything to come from it. And I remember all of a sudden, the hot seat comes around, and I'm sitting in a room, this is the next day, so I'm sitting in the room next to one of my friends, and my name is called to go on the hot seat on stage. And I think all the blood must have rushed from my body because I couldn't feel my body. And for a second, I thought, I bet you I could sneak out of here. I bet you I can sneak out of here if nobody sees my name tag. So as I'm like slowly trying to like turn around my name tag, my friend's like, she's right here. And I'm just like, oh shit. So I was just like, oh yeah, I'm here, I'm here. And so I'm told to go up on stage, so I go up on stage, and I just remember all, all of a sudden sweating and shaking and not really sure what's happening. And um, I go up on stage and I sit down, and I must have looked nervous because half the people that approached me afterwards said, were you nervous? They're like, you look nervous. <laughs> and then some other people were like, were you nervous? And I said, yes, and they're like, you didn't look nervous. <laughs> so everybody was really nice. but. <laughs> But, um, you know, he did the hot seat and through that process, he was trying to help me narrow down what it was that I wanted. But I was so incredibly nervous. I don't even know if I could like decipher who I was at that point. <laughs> and after, after it, I ended up getting two clients from just doing the hot seat. So right out of the gate from that event, I had two people that I just resonated with or they resonated with me and I got clients from that. And that was sort of the start of the beginning process of my business. So since Nick's event, or since the hot seat and, and Nick's event, you sort of like fast forward and you take all these steps in life where you're sort of stepping to the side and, and then you take another side step and then maybe you take a step, few steps forward and a few steps back to figure out which step seems really solid to you. And that's pretty much what I did. 
Uh, jump forward, I think, into April, I realized that I loved building websites. And it wasn't so much about websites in general, it was about the creative process that it allowed me to connect with entrepreneurs and small businesses. There was sort of this niche thing that I could do, which is basically get into the nitty gritty of someone's business um, by helping them with something very practical. And I, it sounds a little interesting, but I think with a lot of people, they won't work on them, their personal growth unless it affects their business. So with me, I found a way to sort of reach out to people and help them personally grow by doing the opposite, which is working on their business. From the start of April, when I had just started out with the idea of helping people with their brand and their design, something that I had done for many people over the years, but never really focused on as a priority or as a business, um, basically went from having absolutely no clients to being booked up within two months with about basically 60 calls within two months. So I had 60 discovery calls in two months and each week I was gaining a new client or two new clients. And so some of them were coaching clients and some of them were direct design clients. And then from that process, um, I was actually able to build enough confidence in myself to then raise my prices and then also start on live streaming, which was the start of something I had promised myself from the event. If I could give any one person advice, if they're thinking of coming to Life on Fire or if they're contemplating it and haven't purchased their ticket yet, I would have to say um, you have nothing to lose by purchasing. Um, you have everything to gain. Because anytime you take an action forward, uh, you're always going to learn something new. You're never going to get nothing out of it. And if you ever decide that you're not going to get something out of it, it's usually because of something else personal. It's not usually because of <laughs> anything of the event. But I can tell you from personal experience, I've been to many events over the course of my life. I won't say how old I am, but I've been to many, many events. And I would have to say NYX is the most transformational event that I've ever been to. Um, mainly because it all started with the decision. It started with multiple decisions of deciding that I was gonna go no matter what, that it was a priority, that I was gonna make myself a priority, that I was gonna make my business and my life priority, that my trajectory of the new life that I wanted to set up for myself was that important. So if anybody else is feeling like something is really important, something needs to happen, something different needs to happen in their life, then you need to make a decision to go to the Life on Fire event because you won't regret it.